Hello, hello DJ. Hi, how are you today? Uh, Welcome to Cisco Live. Thank you. Thank you. I was wondering, what is this? It looks like a, um, a toaster or something like that. What is it? This is actually our brand new uh, 60 ready access point that we've just, just launched just recently, just before Cisco Live. Uh, so this is a, uh, an outdoor rated uh, 6 and 60 ready access point. So 6 gigahertz is going to be available after the FCC approves it. Um, and in any other country, right, uh, once the regulatory authority in that country approves it, uh, the 6 gigahertz will be ready to use. Uh, it is an outdoor IP66 and IP67 case. Uh, it has three radios. So it has a 2.4 gigahertz radio, a 5 gigahertz radio, and a third radio that is either 5 gigahertz or 6 gigahertz. Uh, once again, you know, 6 gigahertz is only in those areas that it's been approved, uh, but you can use that radio in a 5 gigahertz mode uh, until that point. <coughs> it also has a built-in uh, IoT radio, uh, so that radio can do BLE. Uh, you can use that in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, when you're in Wi-Fi mode, and I'll talk about the modes in just a second. Uh, it also has a built-in GNSS receiver, uh, so that's GPS, Baidu, GLONASS. Uh, that way, uh, for the AFC uh, functionality that's required for 6 gigahertz, uh, the access point knows what location it's at, uh, it also has a built-in barometer, and that barometer actually okay. gives it uh, elevation to help that process uh, for AFC approval. And uh, does the GNSS help you, for example, map the gateways on uh, where they are located, and maybe so you don't have to do that manually and map the gateway uh, physically on a map, and you can reuse the GNSS coordinates and create a map of their position? Uh, absolutely. So the, the GNSS will be visible like when you have a connected to a controller, the controller will be able to show you the oh. GPS location of it. Uh, and when you're in our curb mode, and I'll talk about curb the modes in a, uh, just a, a second, but uh, when you're in our curb mode and you're using this on a, like a vehicle or a train, it actually will show you that uh, GPS location in real time along with the uh, RF uh, information on the access point to help you do troubleshooting, right? So oh, as that cool. train's moving, you can map the signal strength, excuse me, you can map the signal strength uh, along with the location of it, which helps you go back and troubleshoot you know, based on where you were. Um, <clears throat> you know, previously, you could do the same thing, but you had to use the external GPS along with our, our curb radios, uh, and now you don't need to do that any longer. So that's one more antenna for the uh, GPS. Yep, you correct. Have a, so on top oh, of this a lot access of point, there. Yep, so we have the, uh, the eight uh, data antennas, so these two, uh, and then the six on the outside here, and then this third and uh, the, the middle antenna on the top that's the GNSS uh, receiver antenna. So that way you can have external uh, antenna. Uh, so right. if you mount this inside of a vehicle or somewhere it can't see the sky, you can use an uh, external antenna for the GPS, which is really convenient. Um, and then the last radio is that we have on this product is the scanning radio. Uh, so when you're in Wi-Fi mode, uh, that helps with all those background tasks. Uh, we have Cleaner Pro that we're coming out with our new access points, this one included. Uh, and that does things like um, discover uh, sources of RF interference, other uh, devices that are around, uh, can also help with neighbor discovery. Uh, and in previous access points, that happened on the data radios. So when those radios were out uh, doing that process, collecting that information, they weren't able to serve client traffic, right? So you had a little bit of decreased performance. Okay. With that dedicated scanning radio, that happens in the background. So you're able to get the maximum uh, performance from all these other radios, right? Uh, and as you can see, you know, with, with the increased data rates available in the 802.11ax with the Wi-Fi 6 and 60 standard, uh, when you're up in those data rates, you don't want to take that time to go off and do those things in the background. So that's why we have the uh, scanning radio. Um, so we could take a little bit closer look at the access point. Um, you know, so you, we already talked about those antenna ports on the outside, uh, but we also have the, on the bottom, and here you can see it on the screen a little easier, we have that SFP port. Uh, that way you can do fiber. You can also convert this to um, uh, copper with like a GLCTE uh, to have another copper port. You have that multi-gigabit uh, RJ45 port here. Uh, and on the left, we have the microfit power port. So this access point can either be powered a PoE. Uh, it does require 802.3 BT power, so at least 45 watts. Um, or you PoE, like on a catalyst switch. Uh, or you can power it DC, uh, and the nominal range on that DC is, is 24 to 48 volts. If you don't have 45 watts of power over PoE, is it just not going to start, or can you just start in degraded mode and shut down one of the radio? What, what will uh, happen? Excellent question. So the power policy on this radio is fixed, uh, but there is a, a power policy. So if you do want to give it, uh, like say, for instance, 802.3 uh, AF power, so 30 watt power, yep. PoE plus, um, it will start in kind of a degraded mode. Uh, so in that mode, you'll only have one gigabit per second on Ethernet ports, uh, rather than you can't go up to five gig like you could uh, with on full power. 
Um, and also some of the radios go down to a two by two mode, so you get a little less throughput on those radios. Uh, but you are able to start it with uh, 30 watts that All way. right, that's cool. Uh, that's really great for you know uh, situations where you have already an existing PoE plus switch and you don't want to upgrade your switch that's and right. you don't need that full throughput of that switch. Um, one other thing that's kind of interesting on this access point is uh, the ability to convert these ports to M12. So on our previous access point, the IW3702, uh, we had fixed M12 ports on that access point. Uh, that meant that you know customers or installers had these M12 cables, yeah. uh, which could be a little bit tedious in some installation. Uh, so to make this access point more flexible and kind of reduce some of the, uh, the extra components that you need if you, if you don't actually require them, uh, we actually have these ports be adaptable. So uh, you can plug a cable directly in, uh, either RJ45 or, or um, fiber, uh, and you can use it in a gland, right? The appropriate gland, depending on which port it is, uh, to, to water and weatherproof that port. Uh, and if you do want to use M12, we have this uh, uh, optional accessory that's able to be installed in the field. Uh, you can just order that, you can screw that into the access point, and that converts that physical RJ45 port into an M12 to be used with the M12 cable. All right, that's amazing. It is, it, it, it's really flexible. You only need one product that way. You don't need to have two different SKUs, uh, and you can do so much with it. Um, you know, on top of that, it is, I don't know if I mentioned it at the beginning, um, uh, but it can do either curb or Wi-Fi. Uh, it can't do both at the same time, so you either choose to boot it as a curb AP or a Wi-Fi AP. Um, when you order it, you can either order it in curb mode or Wi-Fi mode, uh, but once you order it and once it's in the field, uh, you know the only really thing that's fixed is the regulatory domain, so which country you want to deploy it in, but you can choose in the field to convert it to the other uh, type of uh, type of software. Image. So you know, say you, you're using Wi-Fi today and you buy it in Wi-Fi mode, later down the road, you want to upgrade to Curb, the Curb technology, uh, you can simply change that to uh, the Curb software, uh, you know, acquire the licensing for Curb, and then use it in Curb mode. Uh, so so it's really that's flexible. a different software. It's not the same software with a different feature set. It's actually a different image for Curb? Correct. So okay. it's based on the same platform, so command line and things like that are similar, uh, but we do have a different image for Curb. Uh, that way it's a little bit more optimized. If we were to try to fit that all in one software image, uh, it, would, it would make it a little more complex. Uh, make the software, the, the image a little bit larger, and that also means a little, uh, little more time to boot. Uh, this way, having two images, you're able to boot quickly in curb mode, which is really great when you have um, a vehicle, something that yeah. needs to turn on and off frequently. Um, uh, and really, once you're in that mode, you're not going to change back and forth. Uh, but the biggest thing is, once the hardware is installed, it's installed, you don't have to go back and, and uh, yeah. you know, rip it out and put new hardware in. Uh, it makes it easy in the field to do that. Definitely. Uh, any other questions? How does the, you're talking about boot time, for example? How long does that take to boot? Is that a couple of minutes or uh, when you're in uh, so when you're in Wi-Fi mode as a CapWeb AP, um, usually that those uh, type of devices stay on all the time, so it's not a big deal. But boot time is like roughly five to six minutes. Uh, when you're in curb mode, uh, the target is about two to three minutes boot time. Oh, uh, that way good. it reduces it quite a bit. Um, yeah. For infrastructure, fixed uh, deployments, not a, a huge issue, uh, but really those more, the, the mobile deployments is where that lower boot time really becomes uh, important. Um, uh, but yeah, you know, basically the curb mode boots a little faster uh, than the Wi-Fi mode. Right, looks like it's really made to take a beating and um, compatible with all kind of different uh, scenarios, very, very robust, I love it. Yeah, yeah, thank it, you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, DJ. Yeah. Hope you enjoy the rest of your yeah, time thank here you. at the show. Thank Likewise. you.